In today's video, I've got an absolute banger for you. Have a look at this. I'm going to show you how to recreate that and you can use your own photograph as well if you'd like to follow along. And the best thing is, we're going to do it all in Photo Director. It's coming up. That's right, my creativity is still flying high. I'm going to show you how to recreate that image. I'm Harvey Roberts. This is Permanent Tourist in Helsinki. Today, I'm going to show you from beginning to end, step by step, how to recreate that dripping paint image. Now, if you'd like to follow along, you can use your own photograph, of course, but you'll still need to download a dripping paint JPEG from the internet. So just type in dripping paint JPEG and go choose the one you want. That's all I did. Now we're going to be dipping our toes into some advanced features of Photo Director. That means we're going to be doing layer masking. We're going, to, oh, we're going to be doing clipping masking as well. If you've never done clipping masking before, this is an absolute wonderful introduction. As always, watch out for tips and tricks out the video tutorial. Let's open up Photo Director. <laughs> Let's get drippy. <laughs> okay, here's our launcher edit. Make sure we're in our expert. Go to file, top left corner here and create an empty project. I'm gonna save this as dripping. And I'm gonna change the background color to white, solid color white. You can choose whatever color you like. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna click okay. Here we go. Now in our layer that we have here, it says layer one. I'm gonna change its name to background. So just double click it and change it to background. And we'll come back to this later. So let's bring in our file. Now you can bring in any photograph of your own if you so wish. I have one that I've done with this image generator here. And I'm going to use that one. So I don't have any problems with having real people. It's this image here, this is very nice. And what we want to do is we want to cut this out here so on your right hand side in the tools menu on the third option down you'll see this and it says select area tool click it once and right across from it you'll see auto object selection tool this little tree kind of thing so click that once and it does an absolutely perfect cutout like this now there are a few wisps of hair there which are irrelevant i don't mind that and what we need to do now is we need to mask this so on the top left hand corner, you'll see a white box with a black circle inside it or a black dot. And it'll, if you leave your mouse over, it, it'll say add mask. So just click on the add mask tool and there we go. Absolutely perfect mask. So now we need to cut this out and put it on its own layer. So anywhere in this red that you have here, right click, copy selection, or you can use a control C on your keyboard. Right click again. And then paste selection control v on your keyboard and it will put it on its own layer like so pretty sweet right now here's the fun part here on the image the mask that we created left click to select it and then left mouse button and hold and drag it up onto this new layer that we've created and it'll ask you and just move mask to select a layer like so so now we can rename this layer Double click on the name and we're gonna name it to cut out. Now make sure the thumbnails is selected, the layer thumbnail is selected, not the mask because we're gonna just resize it a little bit. And just move it up and out the way. Now, obviously because the background is still looking, so let's just switch off this layer for a moment, like so. And now we can see better as we're moving it around. Now you can resize it as well, like so. And the reason that we had it like that, the reason that we chose the thumbnail instead of the mask, if we resized it, we'd just resize the mask and the, the thumbnail, the picture would stay the same size. So make sure it's the thumbnail you're using. And that was it, we've got our cutout. Now we need to add in our dripping picture that we have downloaded so i'm going to go to photo layer from folder downloads i have this picture here this is not so good but it'll do for this tutorial now i'm going to just resize this like so drop it down a little bit now as you'll notice as i start moving it around these pink lines keep turning up on my picture here now if yours doesn't show those 
If you go over to the right hand side to your tools menu, right here on the bottom it says layer preferences, this little wheel thing. If you click this open, make sure they're all selected like this and yours will do the same thing. And what happens is when you put this picture and it gets to the end of this picture, it'll show that it's you're on that line and on the right hand side it goes the same, see? And the bottom and the top like so. Pretty interesting thing. So we'll leave it like that so we've got this nice corner bit and then we're going to just resize it until we get that line come in. There's it there. So now they're the same, pictures are the same width apart. And we need to check now that these globules here don't go below the picture. So go on to the left hand side, you'll see opacity slider. Drop the opacity down to about 50%. And you can see what you have here. Now we can bring this down a little bit. It's, we don't want it to be so high. So bring it so down just a touch more. Make it so it's really in the picture like there. So each globule now is actually on the picture, which is exactly what we want. Bring the opacity slider back up to 100%. And what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this white from this, this picture. So go over to your tools menu on the right hand side, the third one down again, make sure you've selected it. And now go here where it says the magic wand and make sure you've got the magic wand selected here. And just click anywhere inside, just underneath these little globules. If you go too far and you choose the background, it'll go like this and that is not what you want. So control D on your keyboard to do to reverse that. So go anywhere just under the globules. So you get this little red box like so and just Press delete on your keyboard. And there we go. Control D to deselect it. And now we've deleted out the white. So now we've got this wonderful effect here. Now we need to turn this into a mask. So while this is selected, this, this picture, this top layer, right click it. And you'll see here it says create layer mask. And if you open that line up and go down, you'll see it says from transparency. And what that does is, it creates a mask from your transparency. We've just deleted this so it's transparent. So what it does is basically it turns this black into a mask. So just click on from transparency like so and you'll see a mask turn up that looks a little bit like your black <laughs> outline here, which is very nice. So now we need to select this because we want to delete the back, this bottom part of this picture. So right click on the mask that you've just created, select masked area, and there you can see it'll turn red and you'll get these marching ants like so. Now the fun part here is, while this is selected, click on your cutout mask, just click it once with your left mouse button so it's selected and the marching ants will stay like so. And now if we right click on this and invert the selection, it'll turn everything red like that. Now we need to go to our pen tool, which is the next one down from the select area. Go to your pen tool, make sure your size is not too big like so, and make sure your color is black because we can, so we can delete this area and just paint over the bottom part of the area like so. And don't worry about the black because the marching ants are keeping it as a mask and we won't be affecting any part of that image. Don't go above this, otherwise you'll ruin the effect. <laughs> just make sure you just delete anything that's under this area like so. And once we've done that, Control D on our keyboard to deselect it. And that's almost finished now. All we need to do now is make it so it's visible through and cut off these corners. Now to cut off these corners like this, you don't need to do anything special. On our top layer, make sure you select the thumbnail, right click it and just apply a clipping mask. Now what the clipping mask does is it removes the corners. It basically wraps this picture around the picture underneath. So just apply a clipping mask like so and voila, <laughs> your corners are gone. <laughs> Very cool, right? And the last thing is, all we need to do now is in the blending mode, while this is still selected, in the blending mode, just choose Lighten. And there you go. 
our melting picture. Now there's a little problem with this, and I'll show you what it is. Is if I go down to overlay, you'll see it's got this line. You can see, it, and it's 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 slightly visible in light and screen. You can just see it as it comes in. So I'm going to choose lighten, and I'm going to go over to my tools menu. And on the right hand side, the next one down again is our eraser tool. Select it. Don't have it too big. You don't need a really a, a large size. And make sure the opacity is down to about 35, 40 percent. And just brush where that little line is across like that. Do it maybe once or twice like so and it will just enhance your picture if you do if you if you go all the way down here you'll start deleting these highlights on these little bauble things and it'll ruin the effect so just make sure you've just gently removed with a 40 percent opacity that little line just to give it that nice effect brilliant now we'd like to add in a drop shadow at the bottom here so while this is still selected this top layer we're going to our tools menu and we're going to go to the next one down, which is the shape tool. So click it open, make sure our select shape is ellipse and click underneath. Don't click here anywhere on the picture, otherwise it will add it to this layer. We don't want to do that. We want to click underneath and just drag out this kind of shape, like about, let's say there, like so and it will add it into a new layer for us like so now we can't do anything with this because this basically is a shape and we need it to be an image so right click on our new shape layer and go all the way down and you'll see convert to image click it once and now it's an image so now we can mess around with this so if we go all the way to our tools menu and go to this little harry potter wand kind of guided tools effect here and under the photo effects, click on the blur tools and it will say it can't find any central object and that's fine. Just click OK and choose a blur type that you enjoy and just blur it 100 degrees like so and then click on OK. Now, if your tools menu like this is not on is on this left side here. And you want it to be on the right side i'll show you where you can change that so just click on okay so now that we've blurred it so to put our tools on the right hand side go to the top right here to preferences click it open and under general go all the way down here and here you can see panel location left side or right side mine's set for the right side so every time it opens up a new a new panel like the blur panel everything is on the right hand side So now we've got in our drop shadow. Now we can just drop the opacity down. That might be a little bit too high. I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 60 something. Let's, let's, I'm going to leave it at that. That's fine. And I'd like to have a nice gradient behind this. So we don't need to use a gradient tool anywhere on the tools menu like this. I'm going to show you a quick way to add a wonderful gradient. Go to our background layer. Just click it once. Doesn't matter where you click it. Click on the FX tab here. And you can see color gradient, just click it once, open it up, and then you've got this wonderful choice of colors you can have. I'm going to choose this one here, and then I'm going to choose this radial gradient here. Now you're thinking, well, that's a bit small. How do I make it bigger? Simple. You just drag this little clock thing around and it will start increasing the size. Look at that. I'm going to leave it about there. That looks fine for me. I like that. And I'm going to click OK. And there you go. There is our dripping effect done on a photograph. Now, if you want to save this out, of course, you and just right click any of these layers. It doesn't really matter. Merge and then merge them all like so. Just click OK. And there you go. You can rename this. Go to File save as save it give it a name as a png file and save it and there you have an absolutely perfect melting photograph <laughs> how cool is that and a great introduction to clipping masking as well if you enjoyed this video tutorial please consider subscribing give us a like ring that bell to be notified every time i upload new content 
That's my rant for today. Have a great day. Stay safe, people.